Hello, hello. I've come to share my tea bag uh, tags with you. And again, I want to thank Michelle White for inspiring me to get out my tea bag paper um, that I didn't really know what to do with. Um, lots of people have done painting onto tea bags. Um, I've watched one recently, but I don't remember who it is. If I find it, I'll link it down below. And um, lots of older ones, people doing art with um, tea bags, which is why I bought the paper in the first place, and then never really did anything with it until I watched Michelle and I got out my paper and I started playing around. Now I know not everyone's going to have the paper, so um, we're going to do one technique with the paper and one technique with an actual tea bag. So anybody will be able to have a go at this, and um, we'll just see what happens because. I had some practice goes um, to start with and then I made the tags for my journal which is a previous video so um, we'll just see what happens we'll have a go um, the first thing you'll kind of need is some cardstock or um, it, this is a great way to get rid of I don't know I've got hundreds of books with this kind of card in that I never use um, really pretty papers but you, you just it's a bit difficult to know what to do with them um, the other kind of cardstock is really good for these is the Tim Holtz papers but basically you want something maybe with a pattern but something fairly simple um, I mean I, this side is shiny which is the side I thought might work but it's a bit too plain but this is a bit too busy so I won't be using that um, uh, let me think. I kind of want to do something with one of these, and that might go really well with the the kind of yeah. Tim Holtz paper works brilliantly. That's what I've used for the journal tags. But I'm going to use these two. Let me just check my frame. Right, cool. So I've got stuff all around me, um, but I'm probably not going to have what I need. <laughs> so this is how big is this? This is um, a 15 by 15. This comes out of a 15 by 15 paper pad. This is the second time I've done this video because the first time my bangles always dangle on here and I've never taken it off. Um, I only ever take it off when somebody buys me a bead and I put on, put it on the bangle. Um, and I just took it off and the beads went everywhere. <laughs> so they're not even in the right order anymore, which makes me a little bit sad. Never mind. I'll, I'll try and put it back together in the order I got them from when I've finished. So that paper goes this way up. So the first thing I'm going to do is just very simply fold these in half to make a tag and make sure, I'm hoping these are actually going to be big enough for my die cut. So that was really, really bad. <laughs> it's because normally you'd lean over, wouldn't you? And when you're doing a tutorial, you kind of don't lean over because you don't want to get your head in the shot. That's okay. I'm just going to bring this out of frame for a minute while I fold it, so I can get my head. I can get my head over. There we go. So that's not a bad size for a tag, actually, is it? I haven't bought my bone folder, obviously. I don't really need to do this because this is going to be going through the old um, big shot shortly. So we've got our, we've got potentially our tag shapes. So the next thing we're going to need is tea bag, tea bag material. So I've got a little pot here um, that I've emptied a fair amount of tea bags in already. So I'm going to use a round one because that's what I use, and we're just going to empty this out. So um, what I do. And obviously there's probably a million ways of doing this. These don't tear particularly well because tea bag paper is actually quite tough. So I'm going to cut as close to the edge as I can because you can use both halves of this tea bag in different kind of ways. Um, this part, the top part that I'm cutting off without the, without the border, that works really well for decoupaging. 
but I actually like the border end as well. And that bit is pretty handy for sticking inside our little window. So we get all our dry tea out. Now this side has got the lip, so I'm going to print onto this side on here. And we've got two pieces of tea bag. Let me just get rid of that so I don't knock tea everywhere. So um, this is going to be for one type of tag. And then for the other type of tag, I'm going to use this, which is um, tea bag paper. Um, I got this from a local craft store. I, like I said, I bought it thinking it was going to be marvellous and I had no idea what I was going to use it for. Um, I, I was going to paint on it um, and do some mixed media collage, but that's as far as I'd got with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut one of these squares out to start with. Now I had hoped to do an envelope today, but I don't think we're going to get time because hopefully this is going to be fairly quickly, but it's probably going to be longer than I think cause it always is. So we've now got the two pieces of card for our tags and we've got some tea bag paper. Now this piece, like I said, is brilliant for decoupaging, but we're not going to use that right now, so we're going to move it aside. Now, um, this is obviously tea stained, this is obviously white. I actually like this not tea stained and I'll show you what I do with that to give this some colour, but obviously this is perfectly fine to stick in a cup of tea. So I've got two lots of die cuts. Since my CD envelope tutorial, um, my punch didn't really work so I've bought some dies. You can absolutely use templates for this. If you want to measure and cut yourself a template, use a compass to do your circle, you can do all of that. Um, but I've got a die cut machine so I'm going to be using that. Now I know that is the size die. This one's an X cut, is it called X cut? This is an X cut pack of dies and this is a set of dies that come from the works. Now I've just pulled out a couple of circles that I think might be the right size and as you can see the bigger one that I've pulled out is. So just find your die that you want, the right size. Now I'm going to give you my little tip, um, I know lots and lots of people do this, but what I do is I'm going to make sure this is the right way up first of all, Okay, and I'm going to pop my die down. And I've got some amazing masking tape, which is not very sticky. It's actually a washi tape, which I really love. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get as much sticky off as I can. Use, just tapping it on my leg. Um, as much sticky off as I can. Get this into place. And I'm going to stick it down. And the reason I do this is so it doesn't move. And if you use a really sticky tape, you're going to struggle to get it off. Now I'm going to try and move my chair without knocking the camera. And my machine is on the floor beside me. So I'm just going to pop this in. Oh, it's moved. Sorry, sorry guys, it moved. Just because I'm working at a very odd angle. Right, now I'm going to pop that down. And I'm just going to run this through my machine. I'll be back very, very shortly. Hopefully you can't see me bending down over here. Okay. So that's one. And this should come out very easily. And even the most unsticky tape becomes very sticky when you stick it through a die cut machine. And these parts will make fantastic tags or embellishments or little pockets, but we're not going to use those right now. Now I'm going to do the same with the circle. I'm going to use my tape, stick that down. And I'm just going to run this through. If my backside is in shot, I will be deleting this bit of the video. Okay, so I'm 
lovely. So we've now got our holes. So before we do anything else, what we're going to do is we're going to ink this. Um, in a couple of my practice runs, I did realise I'd forgotten to ink. Now, I don't know if you guys remember that I purchased, I wanted to buy replacements for these, and I ended up with these. I thought I was getting a bargain. Um, what I've done is I've actually <laughs> cut down some cork and cut out a circle of Velcro, so I can now use this. And it's perfect for kind of little shapes, these kind of shapes. So what I'm going to do is go around the edge. This is also brilliant for fussy cut shapes, this little dabber applicator um, spongy thing. So I'm going to go around. And then I'm going to go over this again in a minute with the, the bigger one to kind of give it a soft edge all the way around. This is just my, the kind of harder hard a bit. So we get all of this bit out of the way and then we can do the really fun bit. And what you don't have to be is any kind of painter to do this. Even though we're using watercolours, you don't have to be an artist to do this. Um, it's a bit random. There we go. So we've got that bit done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the bigger applicator and I'm just going to give that a bigger softer edge now. And it's so much quieter without my bangle dangling on the, the glass. But it's kind of something I'm used to now. I hear it every day. I really like this paper actually, it's going to work very well. I had this in a bigger paper pad, um, I don't think I've got any of it left. I don't know what it is, actually it might be on the smaller one, I might be able to find that. I don't like it, do you, when you get that circle? And sometimes you get it and sometimes you don't, even if you press quite lightly. You have to go over it a bit to get rid of that. There we go, so we have the kind of start the body of our two tags so now we need to move on to our tea bag and this will just give you a little idea how it's going to look so um, this one is obviously way too big so I'm going to cut this down and I'm just going to cut that little edge off here Ooh. it feels like ages since I've done a tutorial I'm not going to say I hope you don't get bored and I hope it's not too long because I always get in trouble for that. But I do hope it's not boring or too long. But that's all I'm going to say. Right, it's not quite small enough. Trim a little bit more off. And obviously it's way too long so I'm just going to trim a little bit off the top there. So that's going to fit nicely into our window. Now this one, I don't want to tea stain. I don't want it to be as dark as that. So I'm going to use Distress Ink and I'm just going to, we don't need to worry about all the creases and anything that might happen to this because um, once we wet it, it's just going to kind of blend in and all the creases will kind of disappear and it'll end up looking creased like that anyway. Now I'm going to put a little bit on the back only because um, the ink does come through and so does the watercolour but this side is never going to be as dark as the other side. So and then what I'm just going to do is I'm going to use the tea bag to rub some of that off and I've just realised something else I've forgotten actually I should have got some tissues over here. Right so we've got our two bits of tea bag and now comes the fun bit the painting and the stamping. So um, please don't hate me this needs a serious wash it doesn't actually stick anymore it's so grubby um, you need to use um, a permanent uh, ink for this so I'm using um, archival Ranger archival ink and I'm going to do both of these together and I don't want this <laughs> too heavy um, I'm gonna 
stamp the background there and I'm probably, I've got enough probably on there to do that one. Yeah, just to give that a bit of a background. So I'll get rid of my, my monkey stamp. We're gonna use that one again in a minute. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick an image, a stamp to go onto these. So I think the circle one, I'm gonna use my rose because that works quite well with the, it's probably gonna go that way around when I've finished. Yeah, I'm gonna use my rose. So I'm gonna do multiple colors. So I start with, um, this is potting soil, the brown. I do want a lighter one, actually. That's probably a bit too dark for some things. So I've got my, my library green, and I'm just gonna do the leaves. Then I'm gonna do most of the flowers with the orange. And then I'm just gonna do the very tips with the red. A couple of little dots here and there. And this is vermilion. So I'm going to turn that over, make sure my text is the right way up and I'm going to stamp my rose. And I hope you can see that you get kind of multiple colours in there. Um, I would normally, so I'm going to stamp that down again. So for this one I'm going to use this stamp that fits quite nicely in that gap. So again, I'm going to go in with my potting soil all over. I'm going to do the leaves where I can with some green. Some orange. And then I'm going to do red there we go so that's our stamping done it's a very kind of fairly quick to do they look like they're going to take a lot longer but um, the sewing is probably um, the longest part now another thing I don't want you to hate me for and that's the state of my watercolours probably should have cleaned them a little bit before I did the tutorial. So um, this is why you don't need to be any kind of an artist. All you need to do is to get colour down. So I always, always seem to go for my ochre, yellow ochre. Um, I'm just going to and I'm going to go in the spaces. Ooh, that doesn't matter. there and the same round here I'm just going to do some of the gaps and now I'm going to do some of the crimson I will wash these out after I've done this guys <laughs> I'll show you what I, what I do with the rest of the colour in a minute as well and then I'm just going to add in some red around where the the flowers are you absolutely do not want to be accurate because we're going to blitz this anyway shortly so pff, accurate is going to get you nowhere really and now I'm going to do I know why I started up there. Now we're going to do the green. And this is actually, this stays the, the brightest, the green. Okay, that will do us, I think. So now I'm going to take my water mister. I'm just going to get those out of the way. Oh, the other thing I do is... Um, 
just mop up the ink because the, the leftover paint because that's always useful for something you know you can find something to do with that so we've got our two pieces of tea bag and I'm going to blitz them quite saturate them actually so that paint really spreads this is where I should have had a tissue which I don't I'm going to grab one um, I'm going to dry this and if I can work out how to technically get rid of it during the, I would normally mop this up with something as well because it's such a waste of paint um, hopefully I'm going to be able to try and get rid of this or do something with it so you don't have to listen it does actually dry fairly quickly and the paint does um, kind of thin out it doesn't look can you hear that that's um my broken heat tool because i've dropped it so many times i like watch some paint dry isn't it <laughs> I wish I could sing, I'd sing to you. But I can actually say, um, I'm just so blown away by the support I've had for the tutorials I've done. So thank you so much for watching and your lovely comments. And also for tagging me. If, if you can tag me into what you've done, that's brilliant. I've had some people tag me on Instagram and um, been able to see their hangy tags and hangy envelopes. And it's absolutely lovely to see what you've done. So thank you for that as well. Nearly there. That one's that one's pretty dry. This one's just a tiny bit wet. Be careful you don't burn yourself when you do this. Um, you can leave it to dry naturally, obviously. You don't have to dry it. So that's then dry already, nice and quick. So, we're almost there. The first ones I made of these seem to take forever, the practice ones, but once you've done a few, they actually get a bit quicker. So, what I do is I lay my image down and I glue the front, the front panel. So I've got a big clump of glue and this is the last of my Fabri-Tac until my delivery comes. So, um, Hopefully, I've got plenty in here to last me a few days because I don't know how long it's going to be. You want to get fairly close to the hole, but not too close that it bleeds through. And then, open it out. Oh, I've done the other side, look. Oh, never mind. And you pop it down over your tea bag. I'm going to do the same to this one. I like that side so that's going to be my front now if you are not going to sew this is kind of the time before you close this that you would actually trim your your corners your tag corners and you would glue all of the way round to glue this shut um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna sew these so Now you can, I, I did try it with some, um, what kind of paper was it? I don't know if it was deli paper or freezer paper or food wrap paper, some kind of, you know, one of those papers. Um, and it does wrinkle quite a lot. If you're just doing stamping without the watercolour, you could probably use a double layer of tissue, tissue paper. That would probably work quite well. So like I said, you'd put your bead of glue all the way round if you were not going to sew about now. And we'll just go round. I haven't had any major disasters yet, so that's pretty good. So 
So this is what the back looks like. So it's slightly different, but it's still pretty. And that's obviously our front. Doesn't that look lovely? I really like these. Got a thing about windows and hangy stuff. Don't know if you've noticed. Now you can see on this one where of that's the back where you've got the little bit of tea bag. I'm going to take some scissors after the because I'll probably put the scissors through it. Um, but I would take some very tiny scissors. These are my fussy cutting scissors, and I'll just trim that. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> there we go. That still needs a little bit actually. Can't quite get it. There we go. So that's the front. So we now have our two tags, and you know how I cut my corners. Knives coming out, guys. And I still have to say, these glass cutting mats are deadly. Absolutely deadly. I've had so many near misses. I, I don't even use it for cutting generally anymore. I get my I get my rubber one, plastic one out. So I line it up with a corner, put my ruler at a diagonal, and I just trim that off. And I do the same again. Stuff slides all over the place. I mean, this is not too bad because now it's covered in glue <laughs> and paint residue, so it's not quite as slippery. But when it's nice and shiny and clean, it's like an ice rink. So, glass cut cutting boards, not not a good plan for someone like me. Okay, so. I am going to take this to my sewing machine. I'm going to turn you off for a second and I'll be right back. Hello, I'm back. It's taken me a little bit longer than I had anticipated. Um, I had a little bit of sewing machine problems, trouble. First of all, the bobbin had run out after um, sewing a very short amount. Um, and because it didn't go all the way around, I haven't lined it up particularly well, but I really like them. I'm happy with that. So that's our tag sewn, sewn round. I really like these, I do, I really like them. Um, so what we're gonna do now is put in our eyelets. And if you watched my little eyelet share, you might see that I'm still no expert at using this. So I'm gonna line, line it up. Punch my hole. Hopefully, as I'm doing this on camera, I would say hopefully because I've done it on camera, it'll go well. But it didn't earlier, so and I'm gonna pick a couple of these eyelets. Now these are the old ones that I had, and they look identical to the drapers. So I'm assuming that's what I bought last time. I'm gonna go for copper in that one and brass in the other. So. I'm going to go for copper in the round one. Now, obviously, if you're using um, tea bag paper, you could make a much, much bigger hole. Um, this is just the right size hole for a round tea bag. And then you can obviously put whatever trim or ribbon you would like through your holes to finish off your tag. So, um, I do apologise about the stitching because these two tags are going to go in a little envelope I have with a couple of my embossed tags and these are going off to Gitte, Gitte, Gita, Gita, yes, who sent me my lovely happy mail of the Olympics. Um, so it would have been quite funny if I had a cut myself or if I had have messed up my hole in my hole punch but that seems to have gone quite well. So. 
thank you for joining me. Um, I hope to do the envelope tutorial either tomorrow or Sunday. So um, I'll get that out. I've also been asked to do a tutorial on my charms. I'm more than happy to do that. Um, the problem is I'm struggling at the moment to do my charms because my nails have not broken yet. Um, they break a lot but they are pretty tough and they get in the way a bit. So I'm happy to do a tutorial but I'm not sure you'll see a lot because my nails get in the way. Um, so if there's anything else you'd like to see please do contact me because I'm more than happy to share whatever I do and I will see you all soon. Thanks again. Bye.